Hello, everyone. I can see the numbers ticking up slowly as everyone comes in. Welcome. Welcome to everyone joining. Welcome. We'll just allow a few minutes just for everyone to, to get onto the session. Um, what we like to do in the session, just to check um, that the chat and everything's working for us, because in the past it's it's not worked so well, is um, if you want to let us know um, in the chat box where you're joining us from, and then uh, we get an insight on where you are, and also we get to check the functionality of the system. So please let us know where in the world you are. Ah, oh, Turkey, lovely. I've actually been tra planning a trip um, for Cecil Leicester, Turkey this morning. Nors in Amman, uh, Kazuki in Japan, welcome. Uh, Pratik in India, um, in London as well. Uh, well. I'm in London at the moment uh, near campus. Kenya, France, Belgium, India, Vietnam. Philippines and other Japan, Geneva, amazing. Indonesia, yeah, quite. Indonesia, welcome. China, fabulous. It's always nice to see. Um, and it's always a really nice reflection um, of the diverse uh, community of students that we attract uh, to Queen Mary, and particularly to study law with us. Iran, China, welcome, fabulous. Thank you so much. So... Uh, we've got quite a few of you in, so I think we'll kind of get started with the introduction so we don't um, hold off any longer. Um, so um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Charlotte Burton. I'm the marketing manager um, for the Centre for Commercial Law Studies. I'm based here in London. And today we've got um, one of our discovery uh, series uh, webinars um, with uh, Dr. Philip Saranovich, who will introduce himself in a moment. Um, but this session is about studying postgraduate law at Queen Mary. So it's our most generic um, session. It covers um, the broadest range of topics um, about studying postgraduate law with us. So whether you've already made an application or you're thinking about it, this is a really good session just to get um, some information for you. Um, ha the session will run uh, for around an hour. Um, we'll have a presentation um, from Philip and then uh, we'll have some time for questions um, at the end as well. Um, how we'll run is that you can use either the question and answer or the chat box to ask some questions. Um, if your question is very specific, um, I will answer those um, as we go along while the presentation is going on. Um, or if there's something that's more broader that would be beneficial for everyone to hear the answer to, I might save it for the end. So um, please do not worry if I haven't answered your question. Um, it might just be that I'm saving it for everyone to hear the answer to um, in the Q&A session. Um, and that's it, really. I think that's all that I need to say. Um, I can see we've got a, a good number of people here, so I think it's a good time to start. Um, I've, I've spotted a few more people joining from different places as well. So welcome from Uganda, Uzbekistan, uh, Kuwait. Amazing. Um, so, Philip, I'm going to pass over to you. Many thanks, uh, Charlotte, and uh, well, welcome everybody, and uh, thanks for joining uh, today's session. Um, as Charlotte mentioned, my name is uh, Philip uh, Sharanovic. I'm um, the uh, director of International Shipping Law Program, uh, the LLM pro one of the LLM uh, specialized programs at CCLS. Uh, I also have some other roles actually um, here at CCLS, uh, including the uh, director of postgraduate research. Um, I think which puts me in a uh, fairly good position to uh, tell you a little bit more also about uh, research at CCLS uh, and particularly uh, student research and, and dissertations uh, of which I'm in, in, in charge of and I oversee uh, the the process of um, allocating dissertations and and also um, advising students in a number of sessions during induction and throughout the year on uh, their research uh, on the LLM program. So I'll tell you um, some um, key uh, key facts about our program. 
So uh, the Centre for Commercial Law Studies is uh, located in central London in um, Lincoln's Inn Fields. Um, the uh, nearest uh, tube station is uh, Holborn, uh, Holborn Station on the central line, uh, which also has Piccadilly Line. Uh, we're really, really well connected uh, by uh, public transport. And most importantly, I think for you, uh, we are really in the heart of uh, what we call legal London. And I'll explain that in, in, in a moment. Some of you may already have uh, come across Lincoln's Inn Fields before, uh, because one of the sort of four inns of court, uh, which um, if you are interested in becoming a barrister in, in the UK, you have to be a member of one of the four inns. Uh, the largest of the four inns, Lincoln's Inn, is located um, approximately two minutes walk from us, and which is why our address is Lincoln's Inn Fields, which is the park next to uh, Lincoln's Inn. Uh, in terms of our, um, um, uh, again, our location and, uh, and, and legal London, we are also uh, within a short distance from the Royal Courts of Justice on the Strand, located on the Strand, um, where, of course, uh, um, uh, both um, uh, civil, um, uh, most civil proceedings, of course, take place. We are a short distance from uh, the commercial court. Uh, and again, um, if you're a student at CCLS, I would definitely advise you to visit the commercial court located in uh, Fetter Lane near Chancery Lane uh, tube station. Once again, uh, approximately um, 10 minutes walk from um, the campus. And it, it's a great opportunity, in fact, for our uh, commercial law students to uh, pop into the court and to see uh, live some proceedings going on. Most of the proceedings in, in London's commercial court uh, involve foreign parties. In, in fact, over 50% of the cases involve uh, both the claimant and the defendant from uh, overseas. So uh, it's, a, it's a very international um, uh, court in itself, even though it's based in, in London. Uh, we also a short distance from the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies Library. Uh, this is, uh, I would say, the most attractive uh, library for our uh, LLM students and the one that uh, they use most often. Uh, once again, this is located uh, approximately 10 minutes walk um, close to uh, Russell Square uh, tube station. So again, walking distance from uh, CCLS. So really, um, uh, I would say the location could not be any better uh, for an LLM student interested in, uh, broadly speaking, uh, commercial law. Um, we have a number of uh, even barristers' chambers um, uh, uh, literally across the road um, at the same address, Lincoln's Inn Fields. We, we have uh, Mishkon Derea, one of the um, um, reputable international law firms, uh, again, next door to us. So next to CCLS, the building next to CCLS is um, occupied by Mishkon Derea. And we sometimes actually even do events and, and uh, executive education courses together with uh, Mishkan Derea. In terms of our faculty members, um, uh, essentially uh, my, my colleagues and I, um, uh, you would be very lucky to be with us because we have the largest group of academics um, researching and specializing in commercial law in a single institution. OK, so um, there's no other institution in the UK which has um, as many commercial um, academics uh, as we have at CCLS. So um, for this reason, we are lucky to offer um, a wide and diverse range of um, uh, LLM programs um, ranging from uh, energy law, um, intellectual property law, uh, technology, media and telecommunications, banking and finance, 
insurance and reinsurance. There's a there's a LLM with a, a specialism in insurance and reinsurance. Again, uh, probably the only institution in in the UK which offers that. Um, the LLM in, of course, in international shipping law, of which I'm myself the the director. Uh, and also international uh, comparative and international dispute resolution uh, with modules um, such as um, international commercial arbitration, international investment arbitration, um, uh, commercial conflict of laws, uh, etc. I'm happy, of course, to answer uh, specific questions about um, uh, programs or, or, or modules um, um, in, in the session. So um, also, uh, it's important to remember that we are part of the Russell uh, uh, group of universities. Uh, and what that means in practice is that uh, we are a research-led law school. So when um, you get taught on the LLM program, uh, you are taught by those who are actively researching in the fields that they're teaching. OK, so there's a close relationship between teaching and the research interests of the members of the academic staff. OK, and um, uh, in, in essence, for example, uh, to give you an example from from my field, I have done a lot of research myself on um, uh, various aspects of, of maritime law. Um, most recently uh, in um, the law of charter parties and even more specifically on formation of charter parties. And one of my first sessions on the uh, module called Charter Parties Law and Practice is um, formation of charter parties. And I integrate my own research. I integrate um, the findings from the journal articles that I have published into the sessions that I deliver for my students. Okay, um, and there are many, of course, other other examples. Another module I, I I teach is called Maritime Conflict of Laws, and as part of that module, I integrate my research on uh, freezing injunctions in private international law, which is a uh, book that I have published in 2022. Okay, and the same applies, of course, to uh, all of my other colleagues. Um, for example, our director, um, uh, Professor Yanis uh, Kokoris, has um, uh, recently finished writing a book on, on competition law, and he uh, will be using, of course, that uh, as part of his uh, teaching in uh, competition law uh, modules, uh, and also when he supervises dissertation students in the area of competition law. Um, so uh, we also have uh, a number of uh, uh, pro bono legal clinics. Um, again, this is a, a great opportunity for LLM students to uh, get involved in uh, pro bono work. Um, they are uh, supervised by qualified uh, practitioners as part of the sort of Q Legal uh, uh, Center and the Queen Mary Legal Advice Center. Um, and uh, what students do is they have an opportunity to work with uh, qualified practitioners, normally uh, solicitors, qualified solicitors, to uh, provide uh, uh, legal advice to, broadly speaking, um, uh, the uh, local community, which for Q Legal includes uh, startup businesses and uh, uh, small entre entrepreneurs. Okay, so very, very exciting for uh, students to get involved with that. And uh, nowadays, you may have also heard that the uh, Solicitor Regulation Authority in the UK, which regulates solicitors, actually um, is very keen for uh, students to uh, get involved with pro bono work in legal clinics at universities uh, while they're studying uh, either uh, for the LLM uh, or their undergraduate studies. And much of that actually experience will nowadays count towards a, a professional qualification for solicitors, if, of course, any of you are interested in that career route in the future. We also have uh, a large and diverse PhD community um, 
in fact, one of the largest, uh, again, groups of PhD students, um, more than 120 students researching uh, different areas of the law. So almost in every single area that we have uh, academics ranging, again, from shipping to energy to banking and finance, we have PhD students in that area. OK, so uh, if, for example, after the LLM, you attempted to um, uh, start a PhD uh, at uh, CCLS, um, you will have, uh, I'm sure you will come across other students researching in similar areas of the law. Apart from our um, uh, campus in, uh, in, in London uh, at Lincoln's Inn Fields, as I said, uh, we also have a, a campus in, in Paris and uh, we um, uh, collaborate with um, uh, universities in Paris. And also we have a dual LLM uh, program with the Singapore Management University based in uh, Singapore. And we have academics here based at CCLS who um, direct uh, that particular uh, program. Uh, I think for further questions about uh, Paris and Singapore, I would uh, advise you to uh, um, get in touch with Charlotte uh, and um, uh, she'll be happy to sort of answer any of your questions on that. Um, in terms of the um, uh, LLM program and um, its sort of uh, constitution, um, uh, once again, this is the um, not surprisingly, I think uh, one of the largest um, LLM programs in in the world. We have over one thousand LLM students uh, every single academic year. Okay, and out of those uh, approximately one thousand students, we have uh, uh, normally um, almost ninety percent of the students from overseas, um, and. Um, uh, as I can see today from, from the chat and the, the, the sort of countries that have been mentioned, we always have uh, students from um, pretty much, well, from every continent and uh, from a lot of countries, usually from over 150 different countries. So in other words, you would be joining a very uh, diverse, very international uh, group of students, uh, and you will have an opportunity to, to meet uh, all of them. Uh, while studying for your LLM. Um, in many ways, I always say to uh, my own students during uh, inductions, the LLM program is not just about, uh, you know, um, e education itself and um, uh, being taught by uh, the best academics in commercial law. It is also equally, I think, about making connections and, and, and friends. Um, and for that reason, I think, it's really um, um, helpful to have um, students from so many different countries and to make connections which will be useful not only in your personal but also in your professional life later on as um, uh, commercial lawyers. Most of what we do nowadays in commercial law, uh, everything almost has a cross-border element. Uh, if you go into legal practice, uh, cases have a foreign element uh, all the time and you will come across uh, different jurisdictions, different legal systems, uh, different applicable laws, different um, um, potential for recognition and enforcement of judgments from one jurisdiction into another. So it's really, really important to keep a good network of connections around the world. Um uh, that being said, I, I think I'm happy for any of you to add me to on, on, on LinkedIn if you want to, um, and 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 for us to keep in touch after after this session. So feel free to to find me on LinkedIn and and add me. Um, and as I'm not, I don't consider myself a celebrity. Um, you do not need to follow me on LinkedIn. You're, you're welcome to add me as a connection. Um, um, so. Um, in terms of what we are offering, I already uh, mentioned we have a um, number of different programs, um, uh, specialist programs. We also have a general LLM, whereby 
you are free to select any modules from any program. Um, and even if you are on set of a specialist program, such as international shipping law or, or insurance law, you're also welcome to select modules from, uh, to some extent, from other programs. So there's space for you to um, uh, select modules from, for example, international and comparative dispute resolution or from energy law or from um, the IP program. So there's always room to combine modules from uh, different uh, programs. Um, right, I'll move on to that. That takes me nicely to, to the next slide. Um, so in terms of the uh, uh, structure and, and what, how many modules you need to take, you need to have 180 credits worth of modules. Okay, so 180 credits of taught modules. Um, to put this into perspective, uh, in terms of the structure of our modules, they are either 30 credit modules or 15 credit modules. And we also have, uh, for some programs, a 30 credit uh, dissertation. Um, in some programs, uh, the dissertation is compulsory. So, for example, in insurance and in shipping program, uh, the dissertation is a compulsory module worth 30 credits. There are other um, uh, specialisms, such as the intellectual property law uh, specialism, where dissertation is optional. Okay, so you don't, depending on the program you have chosen to study, uh, a dissertation may either be compulsory or it may be uh, optional. Okay. Um, and um, some of you, of course, may be particularly keen on a dissertation. Uh, it's also the case that many uh, potential uh, employers, depending again on the on the sort of field of commercial law, are particularly keen actually to see a student research project, such as a dissertation. Okay, so um, particularly, I would say for the UK market. Uh, 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 a dissertation, in my view, is uh, definitely an, an advantage if you're uh, looking to go, for example, into a, um, a commercial law orientated uh, law firm, uh, or even more so if you want to uh, qualify as a barrister in the UK, uh, an extended research project um, such as a dissertation is a um, a big advantage, in my view, in terms of employability. Okay, um, so out of the 180 credits, um, at least 120 credits must be uh, from the modules accredited on your chosen stream on your, or, or your specialism. So, for example, if you have decided to take um, intellectual property law um, as your specialism, your specialist LLM, then 120 credits worth of modules must be from the IP program. Okay. And then the rest, okay, no more than 60 credits may come from other LLM programs. Uh, that gives you plenty of room, as I said earlier, to take modules from other programs. Why? Because 60 credits can be split into either two 30 credit modules, or you could have four 15 credit modules. Okay, so it could be two 15 credit modules, for example, from the shipping program, it could be two 15 credit modules from the energy law program, and the rest, your 120 could be, um, or, or has, has to be from your chosen specialism. Uh, for those of you that, that we also, also always have students on the general LLM program as well. The general LLM uh, program, um, you're free to take any modules from any program then without any restrictions. Okay, and some students may prefer that. Again, uh, this may depend on um, uh, their, their sort of career um, uh, plans, um, where they want to work, which country where they, they work. Some, again, in some jurisdictions, they're very keen on, on specialized programs, I, I know from my former students. And in other jurisdictions, a general LLM program is um, uh, a very attractive and gives you sort of perhaps um, 
some further further diversity in terms of your modules. Okay. Um, regarding the dissertation, as I said, I'm the director of postgraduate um, taught research. Uh, so I oversee the entire dissertation process for all of our students at CCLS. Uh, and I also allocate supervisors to our students on all of the LLM programs. So not just my program, but also programs directed by uh, other colleagues. The dissertation is a, a student research project. project. Um, you are uh, allocated a supervisor with whom you will have at least uh, three uh, meetings. They could be either in-person meetings, they could sometimes uh, be um, uh, online meetings, depending on the time of the year, for example. Uh, as most of our students at CCLS tend to spend the majority of time working on their dissertation during the summer months. So um, the exams uh, for uh, term modules in term two take place in May. Uh, after those exams have finished, normally students do uh, a more substantial work on their dissertation. So from roughly mid mid-May, uh, up until the submission point for the dissertation, which is traditionally at the end of August, around the 25th of August, is usually when the deadline to submit uh, the final dissertation takes place. Okay, so within that time frame, uh, you will, you will, as I said, you will have a close contact with uh, a supervisor, which would normally be a um, somebody uh, who uh, you, you you have already met on your LLM program. So one of the academics you have come across in uh, one of your modules. Um, dissertation, as I said, sometimes it's uh, compulsory for some programs, for others it's optional. On the general LLM, it's optional. Uh, many students choose to do it because they enjoy independent research. Some of you may be uh, thinking, of course, of becoming academics in the in the future, in which case it's highly, uh, I think, um, um, th there's a big incentive to do the dissertation and uh, to show your um, uh, skills, your research skills, to uh, Im improve your research skills and critical thinking and, and writing. And also, um, Every year, uh, the um, the sort of high performing students in the dissertations, the best dissertations, always get published in a peer reviewed academic journal, in which many of us as academics publish on a on a regular basis. So, again, frequently a a, a very good dissertation is of publishable quality and. Um, it ends up in one of the international law journals, which is read by academics and, of course, also by practitioners around the world. And, of course, you will be advised by your supervisor uh, regarding the possibility of publishing your dissertation in an academic or practitioner orientated journal. OK, whether it's International and Comparative Law Quarterly or whether it's Civil Justice Quarterly, or Modern Law Review, or any of the journals that you may have come across before in your undergraduate uh, studies. Structure of the uh, semesters, uh, I personally prefer to call them terms, uh, because I find semester three to be an odd uh, <laughs> um, an odd thing. But um, yeah, in uh, semester one or term one, you uh, you have two blocks, block A and block B. Uh, in essence, what this means is that uh, you'll probably get a 15 credit module which runs for five weeks. Okay, 30 credit modules run throughout the semester for the entire semester. So they are normally uh, 10 or 11 uh, weeks. Um, you will always have at the end of the sort of first five weeks, you will have a reading week. Okay, a reading week is a um, really good opportunity to consolidate what you have done over the past five weeks, which may be an entire module. And also, um, it's a great opportunity to also have a little bit more free time 
being close to Legal London to attend lots of sort of uh, opportunities for seminars, practitioner seminars, panel discussions, uh, conferences that take place in London on a regular basis that are organized by either barristers chambers, international law firms, uh, international organizations like the International uh, a Maritime Organization and so on. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, once again, in semester two, uh, at the end of the first five weeks, you all get a reading week again, which normally takes place at the very end of February, the sort of uh, pretty much the last week of, of, of February, um, crosses usually into the beginning of March. OK, and once again, it, it's uh, it's it's a great opportunity to um, attend uh, many interesting events happening in, in London, uh, which, of course, you can do throughout the semester, depending on your on your timetable and your availability for extracurricular activities. OK, and uh, semester three, um, uh, as I said, for. Uh, most of you in semester three, you'll be uh, doing your uh, dissertation, uh, but not all of you. And some of some of you may have, instead of doing a dissertation, you may have um, uh, taught modules uh, that take place in semester three. So I think uh, I know from some colleagues that there are some banking and finance modules that take place in uh, specifically in semester three. OK. Um, so, as I said, uh, the choice between 15 credit and 30 credit modules is um, a choice between a five week module and a whole semester module. The um, a great thing about 15 credit modules is you can do uh, it gives you an opportunity to do more subjects and to cover more subjects during the LLM uh, rather than being restricted to um like at some universities, you know, you're restricted to, for example, uh, four uh, modules during the entire LLM. So what the advantage at CCLS is you can take um, quite a lot of modules, provided you stay, as I said, within the 180 uh, credit total. OK. Um, eligibility uh, requirements. Um, uh, well, um, in, in terms of your uh, undergraduate degree, it needs to be an upper second class uh, honours degree. So a um, 2-1 um, or, a, a, of course, an equivalent from uh, abroad. Um, so it has to be a degree with a substantial uh, law content. In some circumstances, we may consider also a uh, lower second class uh, degree, a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, but um, just bear in mind, of course, that it's uh, highly competitive. We get uh, a lot of applications. And of course, you know, you would be in a much better position to uh, join one of our programs and to get accepted with a, um, a upper second class or equivalent uh, degree. Um, we also consider evidence of substantial professional legal experience. Um, and, and again, um, um, on, on that note, I think, you know, uh, Charlotte is probably the best person to sort of advise you as to um, uh, what sort of, you know, legal experience uh, we have considered in the past uh, in, in, in previous uh, applications, if you are in that sort of category. Um, for any um, MSc programs, uh, entry requirements may differ, and there's no need for um, uh, the law undergraduate uh, degree. Okay, but um, the easy thing about entry requirements is that everything um, in, in much more detail actually is available online uh, on the various uh, program specific pages. So. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to do so um, before, I advise you to take a close look at the website if you are uh, looking at the um, entry requirements. In terms of language skills, um, um, for example, uh, anybody with a first degree, um, which has been, if you have graduated within the last five years, 
um, from an English speaking country or a degree which has been taught in English may qualify for an exemption for our language uh, requirements. Our general requirements is the IELTS score of 7.0. Okay, so seven in writing. Um, you don't have to have seven in, in reading, can be 5.5 in reading. Um, and the same applies to listening and speaking. So it has to be um, uh, an overall score of seven, including seven in writing. So these are, I think, the important uh, bits. Okay, and there's more information on language requirements on the website, again, in considerably more detail. Okay. Uh, in terms of fees, um, um, it's um, 18850 uh, uh, for um, home students, and for any overseas students, it's uh, 29950 Um we also, I, I should, I think, mention at this stage, we also have part-time as well, LLM programs as well. So we, I think every year in, in, in my class, I have one or two part-time students as well, um, uh, in which case the, the arrangements are slightly uh, different as far as the, but you also take 180 credits except over two academic years in, in essence, okay? Uh, once again, more information, more detailed information on fees is on the website and the links are helpfully provided here on, on the slide. Okay. Um, funding opportunities. Um, there are a number of scholarships um, ranging from the uh, Roy Good Scholarship, which is um, uh, essentially um, half tuition fee waiver available for um, uh, all students on LLM and MSc. Um, LLM scholarships, um, these only cover international student tuition fees. Uh, there's We have also a close relationship I mentioned before with Mishkon Derea, um, who are next door to us. Um, there's the Mishkon Derea scholarship. Um, I think for these, it's uh, really important to visit the web website and uh, find out more because there are, of course, specific requ requirements for each scholarship. And I sort of have to confess, actually, here that as far as scholarships are concerned, uh, I'm personally not uh, familiar with the uh, requirements for each and every scholarship that has been listed here. Mm -hmm. However, I think um, I'm here to sort of um, uh, draw to your attention the sort of the different types of scholarships that we have uh, so that you can uh, check and, and find out uh, more specific information uh, on them. Uh, and I'm sure, again, if you get in touch with Charlotte, she will be able to help you further um, with any questions about scholarships. Um, we also have good uh, pastoral care and we have the advice and counselling service uh, with uh, specialist support on uh, both financial issues and other issues. Um, and that um, uh, that service may be accessed as soon as you apply for a place uh, at uh, Queen Mary. OK, so you don't have to uh, wait to be uh, enrolled uh, on, on the course. OK. Um, in terms of uh, employability, well, um, I can speak uh, in terms of employability from uh, my programs, and I can tell you, um, I, I mean, I know the position is very similar for uh, programs directed by uh, other colleagues, um, but in, in essence, the we, we do have high rates of employment. We keep um, a lot of sort of statistics. Uh, on this, and I know, for example, from last year, we have um, a number of students from the International Shipping Law Program and the Insurance Law Program that I closely also uh, work with colleagues on that program. Uh, and a number of them uh, are, have actually secured positions uh, in uh, law firms, in um, protection and indemnity clubs, which is basically ship owners, insurers, uh, uh, also in companies specializing in um, 
fuel, fuel, for example, for vessels, bunkering. Um, there are many, many examples. Um, uh, some of them are currently uh, 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 doing uh, long-term um uh, long-term uh, internships, long-term um, uh, positions as senior uh, paralegals. It's sort of really, it's really a sort of good range of um, uh, employers have sort of taken our students from every single year that I have uh, been at CCLS. Um, so, um, yes, I mean, um, there are, of course, other um, um, specialist research centers. Uh, and um, just to sort of give you, again, one example uh, close to sort of my area, we have the Institute of um, uh, Shipping, uh, uh, Insurance and Aviation Law. OK, so we even actually have uh, I haven't actually mentioned this be before in the slide. We even have modules on aviation law. Uh, very, very few universities, possibly maybe three institutions around the world, have modules on aviation law. Okay. Uh, we also have modules on things like animal law. So uh, modules on fashion law. I think we're the only institution with a module on, on, on fashion law. So it's really, um, if you sort of um, take a deeper look at what we offer, um it's really a huge, huge uh, number of, of modules that you can uh, choose from. And um, a lot of research centers are based at uh, CCLS. OK, so groups of academics researching a particular area coming together um, in um, at CCLS. OK. Um, we also keep uh, regular touch with our uh, alumni. Um, and uh, I know this from uh, personal experience um, uh, because, um, for example, when I was in, in Greece in, in June for an event, uh, a panel discussion and a conference, uh, I also attended an alumni event uh, the, the day after. Um, and we always, always uh, keep really uh, a good touch with our alumni community. Um, and again, I think Charlotte has even uh, much more experience than than, than I have uh, going around the world and I think meeting our alumni. So um, it's um, it's really uh, nice to be sort of part of CCLS uh, alumni network. Um, yeah, we have uh, so-called alumni national chapters um, uh, in, in so sort of 28 different countries. And uh, we keep uh, having sort of requests from uh, volunteer students to set up chapters in new jurisdictions uh, over time. So uh, and hopefully some of you when, when you join us will uh, be in that position to um uh, make uh, your chapter in your country more vibrant and uh, uh, and and keep in touch with uh, those at CCLS. Um, so here uh, we have uh, a number of events that have been listed here. Um, this was in the past uh, a couple of months in November and in December. Uh, we had many uh, reunions and events for our uh, alumni in uh, ranging from Switzerland, Nigeria, Dubai, um, um, South Korea, uh, Japan, uh, Taiwan, ex uh, Singapore, uh, etc. So uh, quite a lot of events happening all the time. And this is only November and December. OK, so it just gives you a picture of and a flavor of, of what we do um, with our alumni on, on a regular basis. Yeah, and here are some useful links. Um, uh, we have dedicated uh, pages on uh, LinkedIn and also on our website relating to uh, alumni activities. And um, I mean, at this stage, I mean, since you still haven't joined us, uh, you, you may not be aware of it, but uh, through uh, our alumni network, um, 
it's they're really really great opportunities both for for work and uh, as i said to make new connections and new friends uh, around the world so it's really really uh, uh, an important uh, part of our of our community okay and that's that's it from me um, um so um we have i have listed some key contacts here on on the final slide the director of the LLM program as a whole is Professor Anne Flanagan. Her email is there. Um, our postgraduate law office uh, contact details are there. And of course, you also have uh, Charlotte, who's with us uh, here, and um, our LinkedIn pages. And as I said, I'm happy for you to add me uh, personally on, on LinkedIn and uh, for us to get connected. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you so much, Philip. That was uh, really helpful um, and uh, lots of detail that I'm sure people will be um, really pleased to hear. Feel free to stop sharing uh, if you want. And then I've got some questions here, quite a few that I can just answer um, that I've saved to the end um, and some that um, I'll get you to help with as well. Um, so someone had asked about the scholarships um, and bursaries available. So um, obviously there was a slide on that with a bit more information. Um, the best place we always advise to have a look is the scholarship database on our website, which was the link was on the slide. Um, but I will pop the link to it um, in the chat. So everyone's got um, a chance to have a look at it. Um, on there, you're able to filter by um, country, by the law school, um, if there's anything available to you there, that's the best place to look where everything sits. Um, there is program specific scholarships as well as uh, country specific ones as well. And um, so um, have a look on there and see if there's anything applicable to you. Um, another question that was asked about scholarships was if you could apply for multiple ones. Um, you you could apply for multiple ones, but you're only allowed to use one when it comes to your funding. So um, you can't put two lots uh, together it has to just be one scholarship when you um when you come to that point so i hope that was helpful um uh, i'm just going to see if there's some that are similar before i go into the dissertation ones which we're going to ask philip for your help on um in terms of there's a question about kind of part-time and full-time um, and whether we do classes on evenings and weekends and um, generally how the part-time works for students is it's um you would still have teaching time the same as a full-time student if you've chosen the same modules the difference is, is you would choose less modules so you would still be in the same lecture and tutorial as a student that has chosen that module but is on part um on full time um so you wouldn't necessarily be having um lectures or sessions on the evenings and weekends um so it's a uh, the same uh timetable as everyone else you just do it over two years rather than one year um someone's also asked about induction week and how that works so generally when you start with us and when you enroll uh, we have a two-week period um, of induction uh, which we also call our welcome week which is an opportunity for you to choose um, the modules that you um, are interested in. So you have opportunities to learn about them, the modules available to you, um, as well as um, opportunities to obviously meet your peers and meet uh, the academics. Um, and it's an introductory period for you for the first two weeks before teaching starts. Um, so you'll have lots of information um, sent to you beforehand so you can plan um, what sessions you want to go to to find out about different modules, for example, but also mandatory sessions that you need to be at um, to get the right information there. So um, once you've enrolled, you'll get all the information about that. And that usually comes in August time. You start to receive um, enrollment information if you've accepted and paid your deposit and you're planning to come with us. Um, one more before I get to the dissertation ones for you, Philip. Um, so uh, someone's also asked about if it's possible to take more than 180 credits. Um, it's not, um, and we wouldn't recommend that you take more than 180 credits. Um, I think Philip will agree that 180 credits will keep you busy enough <laughs> without needing to do more. Um, so it's really about making the choices uh, available to you on what modules you really want to do and planning that out and how it will work for you. Um, um, so, yeah, not more than 180, unfortunately, you'll be busy enough with the ones that you've got to take. <laughs> um, OK, so a few questions about dissertation. So, um, Philip, there's one about if we could provide some advantages in writing a dissertation. And um, I'm not actually sure on this and when they have to decide whether they're taking doing a dissertation. I'm not sure if that's the beginning of the year or something you decide a bit later. Um, 
Right, yeah. On deciding whether to take a dissertation, um, well, we have, I think the latest is probably uh, November, uh, because uh, in November we have uh, traditionally the deadline for submitting a, uh, a proposal uh, for the dissertation, uh, a research proposal. Uh, that proposal is only about 200 words. So, I mean, I mean, do not worry about uh, the proposal and being able to submit a proposal by um, normally, as I said, second half of November. Uh, so traditionally, I think there would be some flexibility in deciding whether to take the dissertation by, I would say, uh, mid-November. Um in terms of advantages, well, uh, it's an opportunity to showcase your research skills. Uh, it's an opportunity to um, uh, go deeply into a very niche, very specific uh, area, which you may have only touched upon in one of your modules. Okay, so... Um, it's, um, for example, if you have been having classes on, say, um, uh, wet shipping law, and within that, uh, you had a lecture on uh, collisions at sea, okay, um, you may have come across uh, the possibility in the future of uh, autonomous vessels, um, and uh, the implications of uh, autonomous shipping generally on the law of collisions. However, because you had a three-hour lecture on collisions, you have maybe spent 10 minutes or so talking about autonomous shipping um, and uh, the future. A dissertation would enable you to uh, spend uh, a good few months uh, reading, researching and writing uh, deeply on a very, very, uh, for example, specific topic, in my example, autonomous shipping and uh, collisions. And it's an opportunity to get, um, uh, to be supervised and to get feedback from a uh, an academic with a keen interest in your topic. The other advantage, of course, is particularly for those who wish to pursue uh, further academic studies, namely a PhD. I think for any PhD application, um, it is important for a university to see uh, that um, you are actually keen on research, that you have um, spent a significant amount of time already uh, uh, doing research and writing on an extended project in your earlier uh, studies and again there are professions like the uh, I, I mentioned uh, barristers for example who place a lot of emphasis on legal research where a dissertation is similar to for example a um, very detailed uh, legal opinion on, on, on a case okay so it has many many uh, uh, advantages for uh, both employability and as I said further academic um, education thank you philip um i hope i wasn't distracting moving around i've just had some noisy people come and sit by me <laughs> so i don't want anyone in the background that's really helpful thank you um so just another question that i can answer i've answered a few has been going on um one that'll be helpful for everyone actually um someone's asked is it possible to apply in may or june to start in september yes um you can apply um at any time um, we would encourage you to apply as early as possible. The applications close in September, but I would say don't wait until September to apply, particularly if you're an international student because you've got visa processes to go through. Um, you can apply in May or June. That's totally fine. Um, just be aware that it might take a little bit longer um, for the uh, admission team to get back to you because they get very busy as the time goes on because they've got a lot more to process. So we would say the earlier the better and just to try and get a, a response uh, quickly. Um, I always think it's worth saying that um, uh, it doesn't cost you anything to make an application. So if you're a bit unsure, um, there's no harm in making an application to us and the admissions team will get back to you. Um, if not, please feel free to use the email address that you can see on the screen um, and I can, uh, which will come through to me and uh, the team and we can uh, try and advise you as much as possible. Um, 
I'm going to take the last two that I can see here um, and then we're going to close up because we'll we'll keep going. Um, so someone's asked particularly about the Paris programme. Um, I can talk about the Paris programme um, a lot and I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, so the professors and the lecturers who teach in the London campus um, are the same. So when you take an LLM um, for our Paris programme, you'll still be taught by Queen Mary academics. You're taught in English. Uh, the only difference is, is you're doing it in Paris. The teaching format is slightly different because you're taught on block rather than in a structure that you would traditionally see. Mm -hmm. So your teaching is usually, I believe, across three days and you will have intense teaching blocks um, as the academic is travelling over to mm -hmm. teach. Um, then you'll have a bit of longer time off compared to if you were having um, teaching spread across a whole week where you might have a session in the morning on a Monday and a session on the morning and the afternoon on a Tuesday and maybe a Wednesday off, for example. So that's the differences that we have there. There. Um, lastly, for any kind of questions about IELTS, um, the best thing to do is have a look on the um, English language requirements um, that we have on the website. Um, depending on if you have studied in English before and also where um, you are from will be dependent on whether you will need to take um, an English language test. Um, there's uh, guidelines that have been provided um, by the UKVI um, on certain countries um, that we're required to have an English language um, test from, but I will pop the link in the chat and um, hopefully that'll be helpful. Um, and it is mandatory to have an overall seven um, and your IELTS test. Um, if you don't achieve the uh, required IELTS score, then you can um, take part in what we call a pre-session of language, which is a course that takes place over the summer, which you can enroll on um, just to top up your um, English language skills. Okay. Um, one more about accommodation, because I think that's helpful to say. Um, in terms of accommodation, we have postgraduate accommodation available here at Queen Mary. Um, it is a um, first come, first serve accommodation. Um, you can apply once you've accepted um, your offer to study with us. Um, the accommodation that we have is based near our Mile End campus. So it's not right next to Lincoln's in Fields that you will have uh, found out more about today, um, but it's a very short tube ride um, away just along the central line. So it doesn't take too long to get there. And a lots of our students um, uh, live there um, by the Mile End campus, which is handy because you can use the library and all the facilities that are available um, on the main campus. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Um, as I said, if there's any specific questions or anything that I've missed, um, you're more than welcome to get in touch with me um, through the PG Law Inquiries inbox and I can uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Um, just to say this session has been recorded, so it will be sent out to you um, within the next week. Um, so if you want to uh, watch anything back, um, you, can, you can do that in your own time. Um, and just to say a really big thank you um, to Philip for your time today um, and going through the presentation for us. Um, I'm sure it's been very insightful um, for the students here today. Um, thank you, Charlotte, for organising yeah, um, and for having me today. No problem at all. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I'm sure there's different time zones all around the world. So um, whether it's morning or afternoon, have a lovely um, day. And uh, um, we hope you enjoyed the session. Take care. And uh, um, hopefully we'll see you in September. Bye-bye now. Bye. Take care. Bye.